Welcome everyone here in Italy on the beautiful Sof Gala karting track for one more round of the 2018 FI Karting European Championship. We haven't been here on the Lonato karting track for more than 22 years, last time in 1996. So it's good to be back here in the northern region of Italy near Lac Garda for one more round. We have three categories, the KZ, the KZ2 and the Academy Trophy. Two titles to be decided at the end of the weekend for KZ and KZ2. The second round out of three for the Academy Trophy, more than 150 drivers, plenty of action, plenty of surprises to come for this weekend in Lonato. Before we get into the racing, let's have a quick look at the 1200 meter track of Lonato with KZ driver Jeremy Iglesias. This is the on board. On board with Jeremy Iglesias at the South Garda circuit in Lonato. We're in sixth gear at 140 kilometers an hour as we head full speed in towards turns one and two. Flick down one gear and hold on to the car before heading into the new extension of the circuit. Heading into turn four, we prepare for our first hard braking zone. You'll see a variation of lines through here with it being a huge overtaking spot. Next up, the most physically demanding corner is a double left-hander which takes us uphill where we'll be pulling 2.5 Gs before going back up the gears. The very quick chicane will follow next, be sure to stay left through the first part to open up the right-hander, an all-important exit. Now straighten up the cart as quickly as possible for another big braking zone. Two more hairpins follow in the slowest section of the circuit which will see us change gears six times. The last corner could provide the temptation of a do-or-die move come the final lap and that is the lap completed in under 46 seconds. The first category we're going to look at is the KZ2 with 78 drivers for the weekend. After the qualifying heat, Etienne Dene was able to be on pole for the final with Giuseppe Palomba alongside him. Quite a good result for the Frenchman after a difficult start of the championship back at Salbri. Regarding the title contenders and leader of the championship, Adrien Renaudin, winner at Salbri and Pierre Loubert second, it was a bit more difficult. Adrien Renaudin qualified in 7, Pierre Loubert in 10, so quite a lot of ground to recover for the two Frenchmen for the final on Sunday. The KZ2 European Championship final began at Lunato with Emilian Denna and Giuseppe Palomba in an epic struggle which continued on from the qualifying heats. Giacomo Bellini remained in third position despite a subtle move for second at turn four and Matteo Vigano still ahead of Oliver Rasmussen. But crucially his French countryman Adrien Renaudin had already moved himself into the top six and with a chance to clinch the title looking ominous, the Sodi driver was not going to hang around to pick up the scraps. His mission was clear, time to get on with it. Behind them, David Vidalis was yet again in the heat of a battle as the field swarmed around the first lap with only Lorenzo Giannoni failing to complete the first lap of the race. Vigano then made his bid for the podium as he stormed ahead of Giacomo Pellini. Rasmussen and Renaudin were now being hassled by the Italian driver Alessio Piccini as the drivers were now settling in for a long race. Palomba was setting some good early laps to keep with the race leader Denner sweating out front. The top six remained unchanged in the early stages with Vigano ahead of Pellini, Rasmussen and champion-elect Adrian Renaudin. But the Frenchman was well aware that there was a long way to go and he still had to get as close to Pellini and Palomba as possible. Denner was making up for the disappointments of scoring no points on home soil at the first round by running at the front end in the final. Seemingly unchallenged in the lead, it genuinely looked as though his point score here in Italy could even see him finishing the championship in the top three. Meanwhile, Rasmussen was proven to be a thorn in the side of his compatriot, as Arnold Renaudin was trying every trick in the book to overhaul the Cosmic driver, but at this point at least, to no avail. But so far so good, as his closest opponent for the title, Pierre Loubert, was still a long way down the field. It was just as well too, as the hard-charging home hero Ricardo Longhi was flying, had caught the back of Renaudin and forced a beautiful passing move in the final bend to move into sixth place. But Renaudin was also looking vulnerable from Pacini, who wanted to end his season on a high in front of his home crowd.
It turned out that Longy was just getting started as he set up a brilliant move on Oliver Rasmussen and fifth position was duly his at turn four. That backed Rasmussen into Renaudin once again, but taking no risks, the Sodi driver was simply doing his best to stay out of trouble. Fortunately for him, the door simply opened up as an ultra-defensive move from Rasmussen saw him drift too wide. Mission accomplished, Renaudin and Pacini through. Despite the huge Italian interest at Lonato, it was looking clear that Calicart driver Emilion Denner was defiantly stubborn out in front, and it was going to take something pretty special to lose his victory now. Palomba versus Vigano was looking a lot closer, and it needed to be, as their countryman Longhi was increasing his pace by the lap. Pellini was doing his utmost to keep the Birolar driver at bay, but knowing the circuit like the back of his hand, Longhi's confidence was a fever pitch, and he stormed through to four. Could he make the podium now? Elsewhere, Alexander Schmitz had done a grand job to move forward and set his sights on Adrian Renaudin. Knowing the Frenchman might be cautious, the German took full advantage and seized seventh place. No problem out front for Denner meant the Frenchman was going to have an easy run to the flag, as no matter how hard he tried, Palomba just couldn't keep up with him. All eyes were now on Longhi, who had caught Vigano, and with his pace being increasingly hard to crack, an overtaking move was inevitable. Just one lap after getting to the back of him, it was an easy move in the end. His favourite passing spot was the chosen location into the right-hand hairpin, and yet again, it was a solid, bold move with plenty of conviction. Once through into third position, the race settled down into a tidy rhythm with Emilion Denner in the lead from Giuseppe Palomba and Riccardo Longhi. Vigano and Pellini remained in the top five ahead of Puccini, meaning that only Denner out front spoilt an all-Italian top six. With Schmitz in seventh, now ahead of David Vidalis of Spain, Adrian Renaudin was set to take a careful and cautious run to the KZ2 European Championship title down in ninth. But nobody could deny Emilion Denner a dominant weekend at Lonato to move him into third place overall in the Drivers' Championship. Had he scored a decent set of points on home soil in the previous round, he could have been champion himself. But it would be his fellow Frenchman, Adrien Renaudin, who would claim the European KZ2 Championship title. But with the World Championships in Genk a little over a month away, it looks like Emilion Denner could be very hard to beat in this form. I'm very happy to win here because I, I make a lot of races here and uh, the speed was always good but I never could achieve a podium or win. So winning the European Championship for me is very something really special and I'm very happy about it. Let's switch to the Academy Trophy with the youngsters between 12 and 14 years old. After the qualifying heat, winning three of his rounds was Sami Megatuni, the young Frenchman, starting on pole position on Sunday with uh, Federico Albanese, the young Italian on home soil, winning two of his heats with three for Sami Megatuni. Mary Boya, the current lady of the classification, was fifth on the grid and Kobe Powell's second back at Salbury was only 14. Back to Jake Sanson to cover up for you the final of the Academy Trophy. With the CIK FIA Academy Trophy still all to play for, Sami Megatunev led the field away at Lonato in what was set to be a gripping final. Federico Albanese remained in second place, but Cajo Cisnelis had stormed up to third ahead of Guillermo de Figueiredo and the hard-charging Spaniard Mari Boya. With everybody hoping for a clean first lap, they duly got their wish. And as the top five were now settling in for a crack at the victory, despite some fierce battling further back, nobody ended up out of the race in the opening stages. The Megatunif and Albanese were already threatening to pull away. Behind them, the Figueiredo had clearly decided he'd finish on the podium in Lonato and went for broke early, displacing Cisnelis halfway round the first lap. But the Moroccan star Suleiman Zanfari was about to show them how it was done, first sweeping past Boya and then incredibly just a corner later past Cisnelis as well. That gave Boya the chance to get back in the fifth and the Lithuanians started tumbling down the field. 
as the leaders pulled out a gap, some drivers were already done for the day as Vyakastir Folosyankin and Ricardo Garcia Filio had run out of luck. They'd soon be joined on the sidelines by Isidro Callejas Gomez of Spain, whilst up front, Megatunif and Albanese were now being hunted down by the Figueiredo. Eventually enough was enough, and Albanese made his bid for the lead, and without hesitation, he grabbed first position, and as the three leaders made their way into the fifth lap, the victory war was heating up. Sat in third position, the next man to pounce would be the Brazilian. Guillermo de Figueiredo took his time to line up the Frenchman in second place. And de Figueiredo found the move, it was plain sailing. And when de Figueiredo found the move, it was plain sailing into second position. Out of the chicane and diving for the inside line. With Zanfardi steadily closing in behind them, it was more important than ever to shake him off. And the Brazilian led the charge to do so. Behind the squabble for victory, Marty Boyer was staying consistent in fifth position, with Jack Crawford of the United States and Poland's Marcel Kuch making strong progress to overtake the Spaniard. But once again, mature driving and playing the percentages could see the Spanish superstar take the lead of the CIK FIA Academy Trophy standings heading into the final round in Belgium. And he knew it. Mega Tunip in third position knew he had to push as third would see him lose the championship lead by just one point if things remained as they were. With such an intriguing battle for the victory, on the tail of the American Crawford emerged the South African ace Joshua Coetze. But under pressure from the resurgent Kajo Signelis, he saw himself slip back behind the Lithuanian one more time. Into the final S's and it was getting mighty close. But once Signelis made the move, he ran wide on the curves. And Crawford saw the Dutchman Robert de Haan move up as well. Up front, Megatunip had been steadily gaining ground once more on the Figueiredo, with second place being much more desirable at this incredibly close stage of the championship. So as soon as he sensed the whiff of a gap, he pounced and put himself back into second position. And it was the same move as his compatriots. Out of the chicane, diving on the brakes and charging through. That was enough to see the Frenchman potentially retake the lead of the championship from Marty Boyer, currently on his own in fifth place in no man's land with nobody to play with. But at the very next opportunity, the Brazilian the Figueiredo was back in front. And that allowed Suleiman Zanfari to get dangerously close. And we know of old already this season that once you allow Zanfari a chance to gain momentum, he won't waste the opportunity. Storming up to the chicane in the middle of the lap, Zanfari seized his moment in a daring manoeuvre that could so easily have ended in disaster. But with great skill and control, the Moroccan was onto the podium. Now compounding Megatunov's misery yet further, the Frenchman down to four. But just in case you'd wondered whether Federico Albanese was invincible up front, on the last lap he gave us a nervous reminder that nobody is safe out front. And with a slight lapse in concentration, he seemed to use a get-out-of-jail-free card hidden up his sleeve and managed to escape what could have been a scary end to his run in the lead. Try as they might, the chasing pack were eager to take advantage, but with corners running out in the lap, the home hero Federico Albanese had done enough to hold on to the win ahead of De Figueiredo and Zanfari with Megatunif ahead of the new championship leader, Marty Boyer of Spain. With that win, Albanese is now just 11 points off the lead, so it's all to play for in Belgium at the season finale. It's a very good uh, weekend. It's a uh, very happy to win I in Italy and uh, very happy. This weekend is very good for me and the free practice is really good in qualif qualify, finish in second. I'm very happy because I mean this is the first year my in the Europe. I, I raced a lot here. It's a quite tricky track. It was hot and I was fast. 
To conclude this beautiful weekend here at Lonato is the KZ category with 28 drivers on the entry list. Francesco Salenta uh, was able to win two of his heats on Saturday to start on pole for the final on Sunday. He had just behind him Mayan Kramers on the first row with one win for the Dutchman. The leader of the classification and winner back at Salbury, Jeremy Iglesias, is starting on six. Marco Adigo, three at Salbury, is 11. Plenty of action to come with Jake Sanson for the KZ final. The season finale of the KZ2 European Championships saw a three-way fight for the title between Jorik Pex of the Netherlands, Jeremy Iglesias of France and the reigning champion Paolo de Conto, racing on home soil at Lonato. But none of them would even be on the front row for the final, as Francesco Salenta and Martin Kramers blasted away from the front of the grid. De Conto and Iglesias slotted in behind them, with Baz Lammers and Noah Millel giving chase. With Jorik Pex battling with Ben Hanley just outside the top six, it was time for his opponents to make a bid for the victory. And despite a hectic opening lap, everyone would complete the Premier Tour on this sensational Lonato circuit. It wouldn't be long though before Paolo de Conto decided to pounce on Martin Kramers and asserted his position as the man destined to retain the title he won so valiantly 12 months before. Up to second place, now he was chasing his countryman Francesco Salenta for the lead. Behind Martin Kramers, Iglesias was struggling for rhythm as he was initially overtaken by Bas Lammers with fellow Belgian racer Rick Friesen ready to move up the field in unison. Jorrit Pex was making up places too and was soon hunting down his French opponent, whilst further back there was a titanic grudge match developing between British racer Ben Handley and the other member of the Pex family, Stan, who was trying to get close to his teammate Jorrit, with Spanish ace Pedro Hiltbrand not far away. The duel of the Italian superstars was about to begin as Paolo de Conto became resolute in his fight to overhaul the Praga of his compatriot Francesco Salenta. Defending as best as he could, Salenta was desperately trying to hang on. But it wasn't long before De Conto sensed the gap opening up. Lining up the Praga for the tight left-hand hairpin, the CRG chassis dived for the inside line. The move was risky and proved to be a little too near the bone, as the drivers made hard contact in the corner. Officials were swift to respond, and an investigation into the reigning champion began in earnest. His move had temporarily given him the lead of the championship, but for De Conto, a penalty would almost certainly take it away from him. Would he escape punishment? Despite the ongoing threat of the penalty, it soon became an Italian trio at the head of the field. De Conto led Salenta, whilst Fabian Federer made a brilliant move on Martin Kramers to promote the Italian into the top three. With the two flying Dutchmen still in position, Martin Kramers and Baz Lammers scrapping away, next in line ahead of Ben Hanley and, crucially, Joey Pex. The turn of events meant that the Dutchman was now in prime position to benefit should the race leader be penalised post-race. Dramatically, Francesco Salenta then disappeared from the fray, retiring seven laps from the finish. This only added fuel to the fiery rumours, with the potential for his cart taking damage from the very aggressive mood for the lead only accelerating. So Federer was now up to second, ahead of Kramers and Lammers, with Hanley and Jorik Pex consistently gaining ground. But Lammers wasn't safe in fourth position, as Ben Hanley started to reel him in. The British wildcard wasn't going to wait around for a second opportunity either, and the Le Mans racer put himself firmly ahead, with no chance for a reprisal. De Conto continued to run out front with the lead intact, but little did he know it was all going to come to naught. The stewards were deliberating, and it would emerge that a 10-second penalty would be issued to the Italian for his move on Salenta. So the Dutchman Jorik Pex was now in the hot seat to clinch the championship. So in a cruel twist of fate, instead of winning the 2018 European KZ Championship, the Italian Paolo de Conto would be demoted down to a disappointing 11th place at the finish, something he knew nothing about as he crossed the line. So Fabian Federer would be declared the winner of the race, ahead of Martin Famers and Ben Hanley, with George Pex finishing in a crucial 5th position spot, enough to win the KZ European Championship of 2018. A very bitter pill to swallow for the jubilant De Conto, but no doubt he'll be back to reclaim his crown in 2019.
My the first three laps was quite difficult and uh, a lot of trouble, a lot of traffic, uh, but he managed to stay out at his position. Finally he, he went in front, Chalenta was uh, in front of him, he was going to catch him and then uh, he, he fell out for some reason. Uh, so he was second, then he had the next 15 laps, he was pushing very hard to go in front, but uh, then he had a big gap in the last five laps, he was cooling down. It was okay for him because the material was good, the chassis, the engine was good uh, and he's happy. It was okay for him. Francesco got a better jump than me and then after that um, it's a bit difficult for us to, to keep up the pace throughout the whole race. Uh, I think Fabian and, um, and Paolo were definitely a lot faster than us. So um, I'm happy with, to get second in the end. We were very strong from the middle of the race onwards uh, but there just wasn't quite enough laps to, to, to keep that momentum going. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we worked really hard as a team all weekend. We were, like I said, we were struggling a lot at the beginning. Um, yeah, so to get on the podium is a fantastic result because uh, we've, we've not had much, much track time really, so yeah, really pleased. Uh, unfortunately, we get a penalty for an uh, overtaking maneuver, but yeah, that's racing, okay, we got it. And uh, finally we managed to win, so it was a great weekend for us. I have a good experience for possible make a good solution. The problem is it don't make many races to the year. Just the last race is Winter Cup. This is the second race. In the first race for the with this tire. And uh, just uh, with this problem, I work in a lot. Uh, just in the final is uh, faster. For sure, very good weekend for our drivers in both class with the Marin Cremas and uh, with the Longhi. A little bit disappointed with Longhi, honestly, because I think it was the fastest uh, all the weekend and uh, probably be with either Serbo or the championship, but the competition on motorsport is that. We're very happy with the performance of uh, Emilia, who is a um, very young driver. He only joined the team uh, one and a half years ago. As a team, we are quite disappointed about uh, the events that occurred in the final. Obviously, everybody saw the passing of, of Paolo on Celenta, which in our opinion was not, was not an opti optimistic manoeuvre, as, as the Suez has uh, declared it. After this unexpected turn of event at the end of a beautiful weekend of racing here at Lonato, Yori Pex is your new 2018 European champion in the KZ category, as well as Adrien Renaudin for the KZ2. That was the second round of those two categories here in Italy. We still need one round to go for the Academy Trophy. This will be in September in Belgium. Before that, make sure to tune in for the last round of the 2018 European Championship, OK and OK Junior. This will be in France on the SA track on the 5th of August. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you back very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>